What's up guys, it is your boy WF and we're back again with another episode of Ask Colonel. Now with Ask Colonel, I take community questions throughout the community, whether it be found on Reddit, Mudhead, Twitter, wherever these questions may be. But if people need help, I take a look at them and see if I can answer these questions to the best of my ability to hopefully help out their Madden game. So go ahead and like and subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm going to keep putting out some good content going from Madden 19 to Madden 20. I got some dope things planned in Madden 20. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your boy. So for today's Ask Colonel, we're going to take a look at my man Pac01. He has a question on Mudhead and his question is defensive help. He says, I am actually pretty good defensively, mostly play a cover three and a three four nickel big nickel but i've noticed i get absolutely shredded by routes on the outside like bench routes and stuff it just cost me game is there a way to prevent them now there's different ways that i can answer that question but i'm going to take it in the direction of you saying how can i stop those certain routes from the cover three now I have been, I specialized in the cover three since Madden 10, Madden 11. I've really made it my, you know, my special defense. So there's literally no one on this earth I can 100% say that knows more about cover three defense than I do. Than your boy sitting here right in front of the screen. So, initially when you break down the cover three, you have to understand exactly what's going on from your outside receiver, I mean your outside uh, cornerbacks. What exactly is their job in a base cover three? That means you make no adjustments to your cover three. So their initial job is literally, I'm going to play everything deep behind them in a straight line. That's that's what their job boils down to. I don't care what your boy Anthony White at EA says. I don't care what these coaches say in real life. In Madden, their job is, and what you should only expect from them in a cover three that you make no adjustments to is that they play like streaks and uh they play streaks and they play uh fades that's the only route that you should expect them to play and based off the nature of the cover three um your outside corners they're isolated one-on-one -on -one. i don't care what the situation is i don't care what logic's in the game i don't care what anthony white told you they're isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Now, what that means is any singular route from the outside receiver, if they're playing on that um, that side, like a, um, a streak, they're one-on-one. -on -one. Seam, I mean, um, a fade, they're one-on-one. -on -one. A comeback, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Deep out, one-on-one. -on -one. Post, they're one-on-one. -on -one. Everything, they are one-on-one. -on -one. And, um, and particularly the routes that give the cover three trouble, if there is no help allocated to them, is all of the above except for the streak and the fade, which I mentioned. The only two routes you can really expect them to play is the streak and the fade. So you can get real tricky. Now, the easy answer I can, say, I can tell you is to switch up your outside corners coverage. He's in a, uh, a deep third. Now you can change him to a deep quarter, which you would, uh, would find in like the uh, cover four quarters defense, cover four palms, those type of zones. You can change his zone manually to that zone, or you can change him to a deep half, which you would typically see in a, um, a cover two invert. But you know, most high level players change their, um, their deep, their outside third corners to deep halves. But that still isn't going to stop the issue that you're particularly having in this question. But that is things that you can do. Think of it like this. The different, each deep zone provides help to different routes. The deep third has strengths and weaknesses. I've already addressed them. The deep half has the strengths and weaknesses, and the deep quarter has the strengths and weaknesses. Now, it just depends on, you know, some things are a little stronger in some routes. Some are a little weaker against some routes. You just play around with them and, you know, find the uh, your best alternative. Now, the deep quarter is probably most effective if that is, if that, you know, against, you know, isolation routes like, you know, 
that the deep outs and the comebacks. That I'm just putting that out there just so you have that information. But how you're gonna make your money in the cover three? How you're gonna butter your bread? How you're gonna butter your toast? The meat and potatoes of the cover three is determined by three different players. I will say this to the grave. I don't care what anyone says. This is my 10 years of expertise in the cover three. The meat and potatoes of your defense is determined by three players. And two of them, I mean, and one of them doesn't even have an impact in this really whatsoever. One of them is the safety that you have in the deep third. He is one of your most important players when you play cover three. Now, the two other most important players, again, when you play a cover three, are your curl flat defenders. Those guys are your adjustable guys. Those guys are what I call the glue guys. They're, they're the amoebas of the defense. Those guys are the ones where you adjust them based off the reads that you're getting from the opponent. Now, if you're getting... Now, like I said before, your outside corners, they're isolated in a cover three. Those curl flat defenders are the number one option to provide support in the cover three defense. Now, you can here's things you can do with them. You can leave them in the natural curl flat you know, zone that they're in, which the curl flat zone the last couple of years has been non-existent. It's been bad. It's been, not, it's been horrible. So it depends year in and year out. You have to test and see if that zone is worth a damn against certain routes. In the last couple of years, it literally hasn't been worth a damn whatsoever. So here's your main go-tos with adjusting that player. Number one. Here's your number one option against the deep outs. Put him on a, uh, a cloud flat. A cloud flat is you um, hit the coverage audible button, the Y button if you're on Xbox. You go down on the right thumbstick. That gives you a hard flat, which a hard flat also is good for, you know, taking that outside of the outside receiver away against certain routes. But to get a cloud flat, after you do that, you hit... The coverage audible button again and then up on the right stick that'll give you cloud flats on the outside for your guys i mean uh, for your um curl flat defenders and that um that'll be that'll be a good zone to take away the deep outs it's also a good zone to get in the way if you're getting post routes as well you just need a guy that's going to float in the area and make the throw difficult so you can't throw it on time but th that that curl flat defender, he's your you guy that's gonna be that you're gonna be really adjusting with, changing his routes. I mean his zones between cloud flats, uh, hard flats. Uh, da -da -da -da. What's the other ones? Uh, some vert hooks, I believe you can do from certain formations, um, but that's not really gonna help you with isolation routes on the outside. It will help on posts. It will really lock down posts if you have outside posts that's trying to you know d up. But also, a very underrated adjustment, which I don't know why people don't do it. I feel like, and they may feel like it's double dipping the chip when you do this, but still have your outside corner in whatever deep zone you want to have him in, but have that curl flat defender man him up on the outside receiver as well. Now you have pretty much, if they go vertical, anything vertical you have, two people playing it. That's the way to think of it like that. So he'll play that deep out very well very well he'll and and even if he um and if you get different routes he just provides he's just he's a shadow that that clouds the vision of you know does your opponent want to throw there when you have a guy that's on man coverage and you still have to worry about a base zone defense it's a lot to deal with it's a lot to deal with so like i said there's a lot of different things you can do with that player but he's your guy that's going to be adjusting with to handle different routes. Don't look to your outside corner in a cover three to be the adjustable guy because that's not really what you want. If you start really getting adjusted with him, you start leaving yourself open. And then unless you're a high level player that is very good at reading and then um, adapting to what your opponent does, you don't want to do that because that's going to leave you open for, you know, 
big route combos, big passes. The safest way to do is put him, still keep him in a in a safe deep zone, and then just adjust with that curl flat defender or even a, a linebacker or you know another safety if you have it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're getting hit with um, that's pretty much what you do with the cover three is you adjust with the 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 curl flat defenders. Those are your safest players that you can adjust from from that defense with. Whether it be putting them in on different zones of man coverage, that you can get cute with other blitzes and whatever. But for specifically, like you said, the deep out routes, which I assume that's what this post is specifically talking about, go ahead and put him in a, in a uh, cloud flat or you know try out manning him up. If you have a rangy cornerback, or if you have a rangy player that's playing that um that curl flat, go ahead and put him in man coverage, and you know, at the very least, it'll do is it'll make your opponent think twice about throwing that because you have a guy that's literally darting over to him once the ball is snapped. So you know, clouds the coverage a little, clouds the um the openness of the route. So that's my response to you. Poc zero one for this episode of Ask Colonel. Hopefully. It was helpful for you. Hopefully, I didn't ramble too much. And hopefully, you know, your Madden game approved, even if it approved just a little percent. So, hopefully, this video helped you out. If you did, if anyone liked this video, go ahead, thumbs up your boy. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. More of these are coming. It's your boy, Colonel. I'm out.